things, how would we be able to see? Okay, so that's where the cons. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Blessings. Coconut slice with breadfruit. Um, amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Yes, we are um, just going to have a Bible study. Um, I see we have someone all the way from St. Vincent, beautiful <laughs> island of St. Vincent. We amen. say blessings to the whole Hoyt family mm -hmm. with a side of praise on tongues. Um, so, um, Donna, you want to start off with a word of prayer? Uh, yes. Dear Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will surround us. We pray that you will guide us and open up the word before us as we read and we study together. We thank you for what you've done to us today and your Holy Sabbath day. And we praise you and we look forward to enjoying more of the rich promises within your word of life. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, Psalms 23, darling. Psalms mm -hmm. 23. What does the begin with in Psalms 23? What does it say? The Lord, what does it say? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is yeah. my shepherd. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting about this, uh, about that, the shepherd. A shepherd mm -hmm. is someone who leads. He leads in a direction. Yeah. So it's not just a title, like, um, you know, it, it has a function. So mm -hmm. when David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd, He's saying that there is a uh, a father, a Lord, a mm -hmm. God who he is following, yeah. who is shepherding his life, the decisions that he's making. It's not abstract. He's seeking to follow God. Yes. Okay. I always think about my Savior um, basically allowing me to have a straight path or a line. He's giving me direction. And he's not only giving me direction, but he's also protecting me. Mm. He is showing me the path to take and then making sure that I'm protected from evil. Mm. That I don't even, I might not comprehend or I might not see. He's my shepherd. He's going before me and he's outlining a path that I can follow safely. Okay, okay. So um, in that Psalms Because mm -hmm. we see a lot of evil in the world. We see a lot of hate in the world. If you're watching the news, there are a lot of things happening. But we're seeing that Jesus is saying, I lead in the paths of righteousness. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I know that humanity, all sin, have come short of the glory of God. No one can testify, I'm without sin. But we know that there is a God who leads in a way that leads to life. A ways mm -hmm. of righteousness. So um, one of the things that we wanted to bring out today is... A very particular message um, we know that Jesus said in Matthew 24 14 mm -hmm. he said and the gospel of the kingdom will be mm -hmm. preached in all the world for a witness and then shall what shall the end come yes mm -hmm. so the gospel I'll say it again this is taken from Matthew 24 mm -hmm. and verse 14 and Jesus says in Matthew 24 14 and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the witness preached in all the world for a witness and then shall the end come yes it okay. reminds me the lord the lord's word is true mm -hmm. it's not going to change the gospel is going to go out to all of us and we're all going to be able to have our decision to use the light we're given or to dishonor it and say we're not going to abide by this it's too hard it's too difficult i'm not worthy we're going to have so many excuses but we it's still our decision to make if we take that light and we use it for god's glory or we say we're not going to take it and that also goes to another topic we're talking about how sometimes we feel we're not worthy to tell someone that 
this is not a principle of God or this is the right way to go. Mm. When God's showing us that we need to be a light and an avenue for others to come to the understanding of his word. Yes. So we have a role as those who follow Christ to support the things that Christ supports. Mm -hmm. The path that Christ is leading in, that's what we are to support. So, um, just I'm just echoing off of your words mm -hmm. because when you look at Jesus in John 14 mm -hmm. and verse 6, um, Jesus says, I am the way, mm -hmm. I am the truth, and I am the light. light. No man cometh yes. unto the Father but by, by me. me. Yeah. So we're seeing Jesus being very descriptive on what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He says um, through David that he is the shepherd that leads in the paths of righteousness. Amen. He says... Um, himself in his mm -hmm. own words that he is the way the truth Jesus and the life so the things that he shares are the things that he applies so he says I am the way I am the truth so the mm -hmm. truth that I share the righteousness that I mm -hmm. share that's what I have lived mm -hmm. that's what I've expressed yes. in my life on earth mm -hmm. to my followers empowering mm -hmm. them to reflect me yes he's giving us the best example a life well lived that he would like us to live for our safety for our benefit mm -hmm. you know uh, it's good to go to the word of god sometimes we go to different preachers or you know we're looking at different videos and you don't always know if the way they're giving you or the way they're living their life is correct Go mm. back to the Word of God. Correct. Yeah, back to the Word of God. That is that is um, such a great um, protection. Mm -hmm. It's a great protection. And that's uh, one of my favorite verses in Psalms 19.7. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. It's the testimony, testimony of the Lord, Lord is sure. Making the Bible the simple. simple. Yes. Correct. So <laughs> the, the Bible, it testifies of the Lord. And a lot of times mm -hmm. there are people who are presenting Christianity, but the question is, is that Christianity um, one which Christ is leading? Mm -hmm. So that's something that um, Jesus warns that as it gets towards the end of time, he says there will be many false Christs, there will be false prophets, and he says, take heed that no one deceives you. And that's the benefit of the Word of God, because it will identify the true Christ, yeah. and it'll identify the truth, it'll identify the way, and it'll identify the life of Jesus, because as we move forward, there's going to be a lot of dialogue about Christianity, there's going to be a lot of presentations, mm -hmm. but as we've seen throughout time, there are Christians who will uh, embrace the evils around them, mm -hmm. they'll embrace slavery, and they'll put God's stamp on it, but then you'll see Christians who protest um, the sin of slavery mm -hmm. and say this is unjust and because of God and because of his truth I reject this and I will have no part in this I will mm -hmm. fight against this mm -hmm. so um, that it's so important as Christians that we are going to the word for ourselves mm -hmm. so that we are not deceived mm -hmm. so in modern times are there evils that Christians mm -hmm. are embracing are um, or that are actually not according to the word of God are there speak um, or to allow God to speak mm -hmm. on some critical areas for our protection. So um, in Revelation 14, we, we, had, we I don't know for those who have not heard, but in Matthew 24, 14, we shared the words of Christ where he said, in the gospel of the kingdom, we preach in all the world for a witness and then shall the end come. So there is a particular message that Jesus is identifying that will go in all the world and then shall the end come. Mm -hmm. So question, where in the Bible do we find a message being declared that at the end of it, we see Jesus coming, the end of the world. Mm -hmm. So if you turn with us in your Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 14, we find this message. 
this message that speaks of the everlasting gospel. Now we know, um, like, what is the everlasting mm-hmm. gospel? We know John three mm-hmm. sixteen for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. Yes. Okay, um, so the everlasting gospel the gospel second corinthians what 521 mm-hmm. it says for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of god in him yeah. so so my question darling there's there's a uh, a specific chapter in revelation 14 mm-hmm. that meets the description that christ gave in matthew 24 14 because at the end of it of its proclamation in the world, we see Jesus coming again. So, darling, could you start from verse um, verse 1 of chapter 14? Okay. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. So, just a second, darling. So, what did you see on, a mount, on Mount Zion? What did it say? Mm-hmm. Yes. It says a lamb mm. stood on Mount Zion. Okay, so for those Bible scholars, you know that there was a prophet by the name of John the Baptist. And when he saw Jesus, he said to those onlookers around, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of this world. Mm-hmm. John the Baptist proclaimed who the Lamb was. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of this world. Sometimes when people talk about the everlasting gospel, they begin with verse 6. But it's important when you start from verse 1 because it identifies the theme. Amen? Um, Which is the Lamb, Jesus Christ. So he stood on Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having their father's names written in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. We know that in our forehead, the frontal cortex Mm -hmm. in the brain is where our thoughts are coming from. Yes. Critical thinking, decision making, mm-hmm. here in the forehead. Yes. So, darling, could you please help us out with the rest of the reading? Yes, and um, in the moment, I recall Mark would say a lot, you know, it's good to do something from your heart, mm. to give your mind to Christ. It's not just from your hand. And that's, you know, it's very significant. The sign is in their foreheads. They have given their minds, their whole being to Christ, and mm. they want to serve him with all that they have, who they are. Um, yes, and then it reads, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their heart. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. And they sung, as it were, a song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders, and no man could learn that song. Can you believe that? Mm. But the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. Now you see, it's interesting. Amazing. Amazing indeed, Mm because we know that um, for those of the African diaspora who were brought to America as slaves, there was a specific genre of music that was that was born out of their experience. We call them Negro spirituals, okay? And it's a song that comes out of great trial. But what's what's interesting is is that what you just read here in Revelation 14 speaks of a people who are redeemed from the earth. And they sing a song. Mm -hmm. It said it's a new song. Mm -hmm. And I think you said that no one else could sing this Mm -hmm. song except them. Mm -hmm. No one could learn that song but the Mm 144,000. So this is a song Mm -hmm. that is born out of experience. Now for Christians, we know that redemption is through Jesus. Amen. Amen? Um, I think it's Ephesians 2 verse 8 that says for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift gift of God the gift of God so if someone's being redeemed from the earth it is because of the lamb yes and who is the lamb the lamb is our savior our father yes yes Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. um so the redeemed from the earth could you go into the description in verse 4 These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. 
Mm-hmm. These were redeemed from among men, being the And so we see here that they follow the lamb Mm -hmm. whithersoever he goes. Yes. Their their whole purpose is to glorify God. They don't want to turn to the right or left. It reminds me they're taking each and every moment during their journey to pray and ask God what his will is for their life. Like we were talking about Abram how important it was for him to follow God's direction at every moment because he allowed God's voice, the Holy Spirit, to lead him. Hmm. And he didn't just follow the first message he took from God, but he made sure to remain in communion with him so he could hear the second message. As we spoke before, he received the first message to take his son up to the mount. Hmm. And he was so specific God was very specific in his proclamation to Abraham, and Abraham was in a mindset of faith, and he was listening to God's message at every moment, so he could hear the second message, that God had prepared a sacrifice Mm. to save his son. And in some situations, we should say to ourselves, would we hear the second message? That's why we should always be vigilant, be prayerful at every moment so we hear every message that God has for us. So um, before Jesus came, they were making sacrifices Mm -hmm. because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. So you brought up Abraham who was going to give a sacrifice Mm -hmm. and it wasn't a lamb, it wasn't a ram, Mm -hmm. it was to be his son. And that was what God was asking him to sacrifice his promised son. Mm -hmm. And he was going to, and he was obeying God. Mm -hmm. Now, he was doing it because he had sinned and he needed redemption. Mm -hmm. And um, to, so so here's my thing. You were saying that he obeyed God's voice. Mm -hmm. And then when he was about to sacrifice his son, Mm -hmm. like you shared, God told him to stop, Mm -hmm. and God provided a ram to take his place. And this, again, is an Old Testament uh, prophetic symbol Mm -hmm. of Jesus who was going to take the place of the world to deal with our sins. Um, So that, darling, is is an excellent point because, again, this is why a, a Jewish person reading the Bible Mm -hmm. um, completely uh, experienced with sacrificing animals. When they hear, uh, they look and they saw a lamb standing on Mount Sinai Mm -hmm. and John the Baptist is connecting the lamb as Jesus there and, and, you know, Father Abraham of the Jewish faith that he was going to sacrifice his son, but God provided a sacrifice. This Mm -hmm. is all coming, coming like, uh, you know, right at them yeah. to, to start to connect the dots to realize that this was talking about Jesus the whole time. Mm-hmm. And what I like is in verse four, it says, these are they which were not defiled with women mm-hmm. for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Mm-hmm. So again, you have David saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He mm-hmm. leadeth me in the paths of righteousness Amen. for his name's sake. Yes. And, and here it is that we see a lamb. He's no longer being depicted as a sh- as a mm-hmm. shepherd. Jesus is being depicted as a lamb. Mm-hmm. Now, who follows lambs? <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but but here it is. What a what a paradox that you're following a lamb. Yes. So he was he was a shepherd who became a lamb, yes. <laughs> and is leading mm-hmm. lambs to in, save us yes. to save us from sin which yes so easily besets us the sin that can will take our life Mm. god is protecting us leading us beside still waters restoring our soul leading us through the path of righteousness Mm. for his name's sake Mm. god is so good that he's allowing us to walk in righteousness wholeness in safety and in health even at this very moment Mm. because of how good he is because of his grace and basically he has a plan of redemption for our lives that's how much god loves us 
Yeah, so you're you're like as we're reading Revelation 14, we are getting glimpses of the everlasting gospel. That not only is there this lamb, but there are people who have an experience that is unique based on their relationship with the lamb. And it says that they are redeemed. It says that they are not defiled. You see, um, we know that all sin have come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But you see, the lamb died to redeem. Jesus died to save the world. Mm -hmm. so, so in that context, we're seeing um, people mm -hmm. who are experiencing the impact of the Lamb, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And the very description given to Christ, being without defilement. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it says here, no guile. In their mouths was no guile. It says they are without fault before the throne. Mm -hmm. We know human beings are filled with faults. Mm -hmm. But because of Jesus, um, there's a change that occurs mm -hmm. in their lives. They, they were violent. They mm -hmm. were um, thieves, mm -hmm. like tax collector. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you had a whole variety of, of individuals. Mm -hmm. But over time with Christ, they began to transform. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why God, our Savior is the light of the world. When we come in contact with that light, mm -hmm. we change. We, you might say, um, you learn from it, but we have to change because um, we can see the the love from God, and we're impacted by the light we have. It gives you wisdom so that you can maneuver within even this life today. Of course, yeah that we're living right now, we can make a benefit by walking in the precepts of God. We can make sure we are working according to the, basically the blessings that God has given to us, leading others to his word. And that impacts us today as we follow the guidelines that are placed in our society, we're protecting those around us, and we're caring for others. Yeah, so what we're seeing is is that God um, has a direction. Mm -hmm. God has a standard, and that standard is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that in having intimacy with Jesus, it has an impact in how we live. Mm -hmm. And and so this is, we are literally, as we just read those few verses we are talking about the everlasting gospel um you know of god entering a human life and making changes we know that in the beginning god created man male and female in his image after his likeness so when people are out there killing and robbing and and hating one another that's not who we are we were created in the image of god after the likeness of god our true identity is found in God and God is love. Mm -hmm. So so when we are studying about God, we're actually um, learning more about who we really are. I think it's Colossians 3 mm -hmm. that says, ye are dead and your life is hid in Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's like our true identity, who we really are, loving, kind, respectful people, that's hidden in Christ. And by Following Christ, we discover our actual identity. We are not an accident. Mm -hmm. So, so darling, um, we've been here reading about Jesus, the Lamb, who redeems people who follow him, and we haven't even gotten into the message yet. <laughs> so in the message of verse 6, it begins dialogue on this everlasting gospel. And it says, And I saw another angel... Hey, Raph, good to see you. Um, it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, mm -hmm. having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Amen. And to every nation mm -hmm. and kindred and tongue, tongue and, and people. people. So wait a minute. Racism. Mm -hmm. um, Out of the question. That's foolishness. Mm -hmm. Because this gospel message is for everyone in the world. What about ethnocentrism, where it's like, oh, I only care about people in my country. Once you cross that border, I, I don't care for you as much. The Bible says that this gospel message 
is to go to every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people. Yes. So all these isms, mm -hmm. I don't care where you're born in the world, mm -hmm. the gospel truth. Remember, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So if you find Christians that are very divisive, and they despise people because they're across some imaginary line that human beings made, mm -hmm. or that because you're this gender, I look at you less, or because you you do this sin, you're you're on you're just I hate you. We have to remember the shepherd, mm -hmm. and this is what we are talking about. The shepherd is Jesus. The Lamb is mm -hmm. Jesus, and we need to not be um, deceived by mm -hmm. some of the counterfeits. So, so when it says that this message of the everlasting gospel is to go in all the world, mm -hmm. that completely pushes aside many of the isms that are dividing people in this day and age. Exactly. We can have assurance the light is going to reach us. It's going to reach everyone within this generation or the next. And God is going to use everyone who wants to be used by his Holy Spirit. The Lord will use you. The Lord will use whoever is convicted and wants to follow his will. Amen. Amen. So, so okay, so we have this everlasting gospel that's going into all the world, but like, what is, what is, what are they saying? What is, what are the words of this everlasting gospel? Verse seven, um, it says, saying with a loud voice, fear God, and, and give. give glory to him okay. for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Okay. Now you all have to understand this is some deep stuff. Okay. Like we could spend the whole day just on like pretty much every verse we're discussing here and breaking it down. Like for instance, fear God. What does it mean to fear God? Proverbs 8 verse 13 says, for this is the fear of the Lord. the Lord is to hate evil, mm -hmm. arrogancy, and the evil way. Like, whoa. So we have fear God. See, see the internet is going in and out. You mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to wait for it to come back. Mm -hmm. And okay, praise God. We're back. So fear God and give glory to him. Mm -hmm. um, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, mm -hmm. um, what is it? Um, whatsoever you eat or drink, do all to, to the, the glory, glory of, of God. God. Yes. So when we're talking about these angelic messages, there is a context to each one. But we're really not even trying to focus on the first angel or even the third. We're focusing on the second, which is really why we're um, this, the whole purpose of this dialogue. In um, but I just wanted to highlight it that there is a message. In fact, that. When it's completed, so so. rather than us going through each message, mm -hmm. um, we have the first angel saying, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, to mm -hmm. worship him that made heaven, earth, sea, fountains of waters. And some people don't like to talk about the fear of God yes. because they want to hear about a God of love. And mm -hmm. that's, that is true. But we need to remind ourselves that we're giving God honor. And it... By giving the Lord honor, he's bestowing us with wisdom. Mm -hmm. So by following his principles, we're getting wisdom in today's life in order to live a life that's going to benefit those around us. Mm. So, amen. So, like, if you have a child and they're standing in a road and um, you tell them to look, you give them the wisdom of mm -hmm. looking both ways. Before they cross Are you the giving street. them that wisdom for, for no reason? Or is it because you care about them so and you want what's best yeah. for them? You know what's best for them. You know what's in the road. You know. So, so, when, so when we're talking about wisdom, we are talking about a loving God providing information that, if followed, will be to your benefit. Mm -hmm. It so, will save your life. Correct. Now, in verse 8, we find a very interesting second angel. We have the first angel, which identifies the creator to fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. Um, but in verse 8, it says, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, <laughs> beloved, this is some heavy stuff because um, it didn't say 
Babylon is okay. It didn't say Babylon is risen. It said Babylon is fallen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll say it again. Babylon is fallen. And it says to say it with a loud voice. So you have to understand that we have three messages. Mm -hmm. That at the end of these three messages, Jesus is going to come. When these three messages are being declared in all the world. Now, mind you, we are not going to go into all the detail of the first, second, third angel's message. Mm -hmm. um, the third angel... Um, I guess just for the sake of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of just speaking, we'll share what the third angel says. The third angel says um, it, with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead and in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. You have to remember when Jesus was on the before, he came to the cross. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, um, Father, if there's any way mm -hmm. to save mankind, to save the world, and I don't have to die, let's do that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if it's possible, take this cup. You hear those words? Take this cup from me. Because he was about to take the cup of God's wrath. Are you catching me? Mm -hmm. And So when it says here, the same, those... Um, who worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead and in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Mm -hmm. Jesus drank the cup mm -hmm. of God's wrath so that we don't have to. So that third angel is essentially saying, if you do not receive uh, the grace that is found mm -hmm. in Jesus, if you do not embrace this everlasting gospel, then you are choosing to drink that cup. To drink that cup. That, and, yeah. Yep, the devil and evil within our society, it is working to allow us to become comfortable in the sin that we're committing or to become comfortable allowing others to commit that sin or mm. allowing others to do that which isn't going to benefit their life because we don't want to say that this is wrong or that is wrong. So we're just going to remain comfortable in the sin or the life we're living. And of course, that is a benefit to the devil because then we are not allowing him to pay for our sins. We're not taking the great gifts that God has for us. We're not accepting it because God wants to give us the gift of eternal life. Mm -hmm. We're saying, I'm going to drink that cup. Yeah. I, I'm i going to take the, I'm not going to take the gift that God has for me. Yeah. The life he has for me. Yeah. Testament where they were killing lambs. You see how it went out again? So, um, I don't know if that's my phone or if that's us, but it's saying it's off over here. But either way, if you can hear me, um, the, um, what was it? The, the whole thing in the Old Testament came back. In the Old Testament, with lambs being sacrificed, that was because of sin. And Jesus coming to die because of sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Um, so we, you know, when we live in a world where there is a war going on mm -hmm. and Jesus is warning that we would be not deceived. So we have a deceiver who will seek to make sin look mm -hmm. acceptable, who will make right look wrong. So when Jesus says, take heed that no one deceives you, what we're reading here are protections, protections to know that Jesus, um, died so that we might have life. Mm -hmm. He died to endure and to redeem us from the sins we committed. Mm -hmm. We need to look at sin as a problem. Mm -hmm. Amen? So so like when we, it says here, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So we had a people who were following the Lamb, whithersoever he goes, the character of the Lamb was being expressed in these people who are singing a song specific to their relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then these people are going into all the world to share the gospel, the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. They're directing people to fear God, to give glory to him, 
and to declare for the hour of his judgment has come. I don't know about you, but John 3.16 declares that God's people who accept Jesus don't have to be afraid of the judgment because they have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. And it says that he who created, what did it say? The, the fountains of waters who created the world. And it says Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that there is wrong in this world. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. There is wrong in this world. Mm -hmm. There are evils to be avoided. There are systems that misrepresent God and the truth. And um, so yeah. Yeah. when I hear that the verse Babylon is fallen, it reminds me to stay vigilant, stay awake. Don't take every um, or any advice or prophecy from anyone. Mm. Yes. Um, test the spirits. Pray to the Lord for yourself. Amen. Pray mm -hmm. to the Lord for yourself. Now in verse 14, darling. It says, and I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having in his hand, uh, in, in his on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. We know that um, Jesus would say that the harvest is the end of the world. Mm -hmm. um, that language that he uses in the Gospels. And here we see these three angels are declared in all the world, in every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, and then shall the end come that Jesus spoke about, and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness, and then shall the end come. And we see this this everlasting gospel to be preached in all the world. And then we see Jesus on a cloud with a sharp sickle declaring, what did he say? That the, um, the, the earth, that the time to reap is now, and then he reaps the earth. Mm -hmm. So we see a description of what Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24, 14 of a gospel of a kingdom being yeah. preached in all the world for a witness mm -hmm. and then shall the end come. Yeah. And we see again that this gospel, this everlasting gospel in Revelation 14 being expressly identified. And at the end of this proclamation, we see a people who are keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So again, we are seeing the impact of the intimacy with Jesus where people are seeking to reverence God, seeking to glorify God, mm -hmm. seeking to follow God, join the people who are following the Lamb whithersoever He goes. And these people will, um, it says that um, Jesus comes at the end of this proclamation once this message is presented to the whole world. Amen. So, so, so what that second angel that second angel reminds us is that there is wrong in this world. When it says Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. If you look at Christianity now, mm -hmm. people will say, man, don't judge. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're a Christian, you have mm -hmm. to love and accept everything. And if yeah. you don't accept everything, then you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. However, those same individuals can see how right and wrong play out in their society and community. Mm. There is a right and there is a complete wrong, and you can see that. So we need to encourage others to follow the word because these imperceptible wrongs that we may allow, mm. they allow for a desensitization to hurting those around us, to killing even mm. the Young children who are watching different programs, you might not even understand. They might. So, um, thank you. There are definitely a lot of influences that we need to avoid. I know that um, we read earlier John fourteen six that says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Mm -hmm the significance of the truth mm -hmm. because the truth will identify the heir. The truth will identify the counter counterfeit. When Psalm says that Jesus leads in the paths of righteousness, mm -hmm. that will, um, you'll be able to discern the paths of unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. And if the life of Christ, 
Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life will be able to differentiate from a counterfeit life because yeah. that's why the scripture is so important. So I'd like you, beloved, to go to um, Hebrews 1, verses 8 and 9. This is Hebrews 1, verses 8 and 9 because Jesus warned about false Christ, false Christ in the last days. And it's really important as we're seeing... Um, vast counterfeits that we are not yes darling you have mm -hmm. talk to us about this is beloved get ready this is God the Father discussing God the Son okay God the Father discussing God the Son what does God say Hebrews 1 8 2 9 but unto the Son he saith thy throne O God is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Amen. Praise Amen. The Lord. All right. Do you all hear that? God the Father is identifying God the Son. And he says, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity Christians are talking about love we need to love 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 we need to accept 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 Jesus is the blueprint of love amen and it says that Jesus loved righteousness and hated iniquity so it's sort of like if if we have a, a Jesus who loves righteousness but he also loves iniquity, we have a problem. Because the Jesus of Scripture, he loves righteousness, but he hates iniquity. It doesn't say he hates the sinner. Jesus died for the sinner. Amen? Jesus died for the sinner, but he hates iniquity. Okay? Now, in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6, unless you have any thought on that, in 1 Corinthians 13, 6, where love is defined, where love is defined. You know, we talk about love, love, love. Christians, we have to love. We have to love. In 1 Corinthians 13, because remember, we have to beware of false Christ and false prophets. So we have Jesus being described in the Bible as one who loves righteousness and hates iniquity. So if our Christianity is one that loves righteousness and loves iniquity, we got a problem. If we have a Christ that loves iniquity and loves righteousness, we have a problem. Jesus is the way, he's the truth, he's the life. The law of God testifies of him. Jesus said, search the scriptures for in them. You think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. So the scriptures testify of the truth, not only of Jesus, but of love itself. So when someone's saying, oh man, you just have to love, you just need to have to love. Let's look what love says. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 6, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 6, the Word of God describes love. Mm -hmm. um, it says that charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, mm -hmm. is not puffed up. Verse 5, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, mm -hmm. is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Beloved, verse 6, what is verse 6 see? Drum roll. Drum roll, verse 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Wait a minute. Did you just say that love does not rejoice in iniquity, mm -hmm. yeah. but love rejoices in the truth? Mm -hmm. You see, real love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. It rejoices in the truth. Remember, Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Now, what's amazing is, is that while Jesus was on earth, he came to seek and save that which was lost. He came to save sinners, yes? But Jesus did not compromise. Mm -hmm. Jesus loved the sinner, but he hated the sin, and he realizes that he was going to die because of the sin. He came because of the sin. Yeah. So sin separates. Yeah. So sin is a problem. So if Christianity begins to embrace sin, if Christianity begins to embrace uh, 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 racism or ethnocentrism or misogyny or misandry, um, if it begins to embrace things that are contrary to the truth of Christ, then we have a protest on our hands. Mm -hmm. We have a protest on our hands and we need to know that this is not the truth. Because this is why 
the second angel. You see, the second angel is identifying that there is something to be rejected, something that is fallen. So, so when people think, oh, uh, love is all about accepting. Love is all about accepting. Love is all about... say, oh, look at Jesus. He's a sinner. Look at Jesus. He is a, a friend of gluttons and drunkards. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was there on a mission. Mm -hmm. He was not seeking to keep them in drunkenness. He was not seeking for them to stay as gluttons. He was there on a mission Amen. to liberate them. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. So, 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 so when we're, we're, we're talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is described. He gives us a lesson. Mm -hmm. We're rejoicing in the truth and yes. we're living it. Daily, we're making sure that our practices and the ideas we're having and the actions we're taking are according to the word. We're living according to righteous principles. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want to welcome uh, Kenny Rochester. I want to welcome my cousin Ryan. See Brian McDonald. Welcome, welcome. Um, I, I see, Kenny, we went to elementary school, and they're very together. It's, a, it's an awesome world with the internet. Um, but I, I'll just say again, um, well, we're just discussing the importance of the truth. We're discussing the importance of Jesus Christ and how um, there is an enemy that seeks to misrepresent Christ. And a lot mm -hmm. of Christians, they can mean well. Mm -hmm. they, they want to love like Christ loves, but they're being presented with a false Christ, which not only loves sinners, but he compromises with sin. And that's not Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus was there with drunkards, he was seeking to free them. Mm -hmm. Remember, it says, what, it, what was the prophecy um, that he read as a child when he went to the temple? Mm -hmm. He opened up Isaiah mm -hmm. and, he, and he said, what did he say? He said, this day is the scripture fulfilled before your ears that, um, oh, mercy. Let, let me go to, I think it's, is it John 4 or Luke chapter 4? I think it's Luke chapter 4. Help me, Lord. Where is this? And at times, yes. um, even in the word and daily life, you can see compromise is dangerous. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't always say that in Christianity we can compromise to love another. Mm -hmm. Because look at it on a realistic day-to-day -day basis. If our FBI, CIA, um, if if you know, in different avenues, if the HIPAA guidelines in our workplace are compromised, yeah, how is that protecting us, right? Correct, correct. So, so there's, um, yeah. So it's like if we have stopped, if the traffic lights just stop working, we would all have some serious problems. Mm -hmm. There are guidelines in place for a reason, and God has guidelines to protect His people from deception. So when we look in um, Luke 4 and verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus came on a mission to heal the brokenhearted, to let the oppressed go free, to mm -hmm. set the captives free, to understand that um, when the those who represent Jesus mm -hmm. present to the world um, an acceptance to sin, an acceptance mm -hmm. to the things that separate us from God, it makes Jesus a false mm -hmm. shepherd. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus of Psalms 23 says that he leads in the path of, unri of righteousness, mm -hmm. and then there are Christians who say, no, 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 Jesus leads in the path of unrighteousness mm -hmm. too. So it's sort of like we, that's why that second angel is so profound, because it's identifying that there is spiritual confusion around and identifying that there are things that are wrong, that are to be rejected. And it's not a lack of love. Like Christ, when he found the woman caught in the act of adultery, and um, he said to the, the men who were trying to stone, mm -hmm. stone her, he said, um, they said, Jesus said, he that is without sin cast yeah. the first stone. Mm -hmm. And they dropped those stones one by one and left. But Jesus, um, when the woman turned around, he said, where are thy accusers? She's like, I don't see anyone, my Lord. Mm -hmm. And then he said to her, go and sin no more. Amen. So Jesus was not someone who said, go and sin some more. 
continue in drunkenness, continue in committing adultery. Mm -hmm. Jesus leads in the path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So David wasn't just speaking um, things that didn't have a practical application. Mm -hmm. Jesus literally, in life, mm -hmm. led in the path of righteousness. Yeah. He didn't want us to remain mm -hmm. in that place. Yeah, the Lord would love would like for us to live an abundant life. He pardons our sin. He provides us with healing, his power and strength to continue forward in living a righteous life. Mm -hmm. So, so darling, in, in Luke, so, so when we bring up that story, it's almost like when Christians say something is wrong, mm -hmm. someone might say, he that is without sin, cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. Or they'll say, hey, are you without sin? Mm -hmm. Almost like a Christian, there's never a point where a Christian can address something wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the world will embrace a Christianity mm -hmm. of Joel Steen, where everything is right. Hello, everyone. Um, you know, it's about being happy and walking out and having a pharmaceutical commercial experience. Mm -hmm. But what happens when you begin to address the will of God? Mm -hmm. What happens when you address what God? not a lack of love, that that is not uh, going away from Christ, because Christ didn't have a lack of love when he said, go and sin no more. You, you see, and that's what the church is supposed to be encouraging, because sin not only separates us from God, it's detrimental to our souls, it's detrimental to, to, our, to our existence. Mm -hmm. And if Christianity refuses to identify that there are things that are wrong, mm -hmm. that there are things to avoid, the things that are not in harmony with the will of God, mm -hmm. the world is losing out on the truth. Yes, and of course you're going to address those issues in balance, in a realistic way, a viewpoint that you are hearing and you are giving. You're allowing the person to grow and to progress in the light you're providing to them. And um, yes, you're just remembering that of overall that God has provided you with that light, that you are to remain humble, but that it is your responsibility to guide your brother or your sister in truth. And yep, it basically the Lord has provided us with this truth for our protection and not for our harm. Amen. Amen. So... Um, I want to bring up another example because Jesus is, is sometimes being utilized as an example to keep Christians from actually addressing sin. Mm -hmm. So um, when you look at the example where it says there was in Luke 6, verse 41 and 42, there was Jesus was addressing, why are you addressing the moat, small little <laughs> dust particle, mm -hmm. in your brother's eye mm -hmm. and not dealing with the beam in your own eye? Yeah. And sometimes what people do is when a Christian is addressing something, let's call it the second angel, that there is a problem, um, that they will just say, hey, stop talking about the moat in other people's eye. Take the beam out of your eye. You're just a hypocrite. So just be silent. But if you're silent and smiling and hugging and accepting everything, all is well. But the moment you begin to say, wait, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. This is not the will of God. You'll find that there's friction. Mm -hmm. You'll find that, that people will try to use Jesus as an example to say, well, stop addressing moats and deal with the beam in your eye. And what we, but by keep reading, darling, mm -hmm. it says that Jesus says, thou hypocrite, mm -hmm. first take out the beam out of your eye and then go take the moat out of your neighbor's eye. Mm -hmm. So Jesus didn't want it to be in a position where you just walk around with a beam in your eye. Mm -hmm or you walk around leaving the moat in your brother's eye. Mm -hmm. Christ wants the moat out of your eye. Mm -hmm. the, I'm sorry. Christ wants the moat out of his eye mm -hmm. and the beam out of your eye. Yeah. So Christ doesn't want us walking around mm -hmm. in a perpetual state of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. He came to set the captives yeah. free. And you can see just the love of Christ that he cares about our reputation. Yeah. And he wants us to portray his goodness, his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so God is 
so gracious toward us to allow us to have the knowledge of him. He wants to give us more and more of his wisdom and insight so we can live a healthy and fulfilled existence. Amen. Amen. Jesus said um, to that fulfilled existence that you were talking about, darling, in um, in Jesus, in the Gospels, Jesus said, let your light so shine mm -hmm. before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He said, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, it's good for nothing. There is a message that God's people are to be sharing in this time. And I think that um, we are being disarmed. We are being rendered impotent under the false context of love uh, or under the false context of of utilizing Jesus, a false Jesus, mm -hmm. to make impotent the church. The real Jesus loved the sinner but hated the sin. And he directed the sinner away from the sin. But if Christians in this modern age are saying, no man, we got to love the sinner and we got to love the sin. That's not the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's a false gospel. That's mm -hmm. a counterfeit gospel. That's false love. Mm -hmm. And that's a false Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, when it says that Babylon is fallen, mm -hmm. it's talking about a spiritual counterfeit that is not um, the truth. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it needs to be identified so that God's people can avoid it. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see um, the 144,000 that are preaching a message to fear God, give glory to Him. They're following the Lamb whithersoever He goes in Revelation 14. And... It's and then the people who hear this message mm -hmm. and choose to follow the Lamb, they will also join in keeping the commandments of God and having the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But before that message, they were all up in Babylon. Mm -hmm. So it's important that as Christians that we don't feel that it is a sign of Christianity to be silent to sin, mm -hmm. that it is a sign of Christianity to accept sin, mm -hmm. that Jesus was somehow an acceptor of sin. The Bible says Jesus loved righteousness and hated sin. So in Mark 1... We live in a postmodern age where when you speak in the context of truth with boldness, that's like, what are you doing? Come on, man. How do you know that's the truth? Um, you know, what is it saying? It's saying I'm currently offline. Okay. So we live in a postmodern age where speaking concerning truth and authority is not respected. It's not regarded. It's not respected in the world. It's definitely, in some places, not even respected in the church, where young people who are being exposed to this postmodern age, moral relativism, where it's sort of like, what is right? Well, it's wrong here, but it's right over there. Who am I to have a position that I can stand on? And as Christians... We stand mm -hmm. on the Word of God. We stand on Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and, that, um, and that is why, darling, mm -hmm. that even in Christ's time, we had priests, we had scribes who were speaking the Word of God, mm -hmm. but they had no authority because they probably were presenting it with an open mind. They were like, oh, yeah, the Messiah might come, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's like, but when Jesus spoke, he spoke with authority. And there was a difference in the way that Jesus spoke than in the way that the scribes spoke. And what's mm -hmm. crazy is there are many people who have never encountered a Christian because there are so many Christians who are like, um, how do I say it? They're like uh, ships without an anchor mm -hmm. because they refuse to embrace the word of God with authority and boldness because there's so much doubt around them. We live in a postmodern age. Back in the day, if you said, I believe, you'd have everyone around you clapping. You see, now, in this time, in this generation, you say, I doubt. People will clap. It's a different age. 
But we as Christians need to still live by faith. Yes, Don. Today you hear a lot to look into yourself and to feel with your heart what you may think is right or what you may perceive as your truth, your personal truth, Mm -hmm. independent of the Word of God. But we need to know that the Lord has given us His Word for safety so that we're not just going by feelings. Uh, that we're living according to principle. Amen, darling. Amen. Um, I want to speak to that point, darling, that we're living according to principle. So in terms of the practicals of of what it means to identify um, that which is not in harmony with the will of God, when we go to the book of Galatians, we're going to Galatians um, chapter 6, I say General Electric Flipping Company, so I'm going to go to the G. There it is. Um, Yes, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Brethren, Mm -hmm. if a man be overtaken in a fault, Mm -hmm. ye which are spiritual, Mm -hmm. restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, Mm -hmm. considering thyself, lest thou also Mm -hmm. be tempted. I'll say verse 1 again. Yeah. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, meekness. considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Mm-hmm. Darling, could you take verse 2? Yeah. Let's see here. And it's reminding us that as we minister to someone else's needs, right? We're reminding ourselves of the goodness, the instruction that God has given to us to protect ourselves as well and our family. Correct, because we're not immune. We are, we are, you know, but for the grace of God, there go I. Yeah. Yes, and then verse 2, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Okay, darling, could you read that again? And bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen, darling. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So when Christ came down, caught, um, they, they brought a woman um, who was caught in the very act of adultery. Mm-hmm. What did Jesus do? He bared her burdens. Mm-hmm. He um, not only said, neither do I condemn thee. They dropped their stones mm-hmm. and he said, go and sin no more. Mm-hmm. So the concept was he was seeking to help one who was overtaken in a fault so that she would not continue in sin. So, so we're, what we're seeing is that's what Jesus did, and that's what the church is supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. But what happens when the church starts saying, go and sin some more? Mm. What is that? That leads to confusion. So, so, so the Bible's telling us, if a man or if a woman be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. What happens if a false prophet begins to declare if you see such a one overtaken in a fault encourage him and pat him on the back Mm -hmm. that's not the gospel that is um that is false doctrine that is babylon you see babylon is fallen we need false prophets and false christ and what's amazing is darling in in um help me lord it says in revelation 3 that jesus is on is at the door knocking seeking entrance Mm -hmm. to a people who feel that they can see to a people who feel that they are clothed in righteousness to a people who feel that they are rich Mm -hmm. but they are poor they are naked and they are blind when you say that i'm thinking beware of the doctrine of your own ideology Mm. your own thoughts and perceptions Yes. Right? And then it follows here. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Mm. You'll have rejoicing that you followed the word of God. You looked into the scripture for yourself. Yes. Amen, darling. That's a good point. Looking into the scripture for yourself. Again, beloved, Jesus is the way, he's the truth, he's the life. Um, There is a lot of deception out there. Um, When you look at January 6th, that was a lot of Christians there attacking the Capitol. They were praying in the Capitol after attacking cops. 
um, breaking windows. They were in there praying. Um, slavery, Christians were doing that. There's a lot of evils that are being explained away by Christians. But what I like to share is that whenever there is counterfeit Christianity, wherever in the world, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in America, South America, Africa, that is where Protestants emerge to protest the counterfeit form, to declare that Babylon is fallen. It's happened throughout history and it's happening today. And I just want to encourage, you see, because um, error is dispelled by truth. Mm -hmm. And by lifting up Jesus, it is literally um, dispelling. And when I say Jesus, lifting up the Jesus of the scriptures, mm -hmm. lifting up the Jesus who leads in the paths of righteousness, lifting up the Jesus who loves righteousness and hates iniquity, mm -hmm. exemplifying the love mm -hmm. that rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. So, so God loved the world that he gave his son, but he doesn't rejoice when we sin. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. He doesn't rejoice when we sin. Mm -hmm. It grieves his heart because sin separates us from God. Mm -hmm. And because of sin, God sent his son to die. Mm -hmm. So, so we as Christians, we are to warn the world mm -hmm. of the judgment that comes as a result of sin. But if the church begins to not only embrace um if the church begins to embrace sin, we have a serious problem. So, beloved, I just wanted to share with you, we just wanted to share with you, that Jesus mm -hmm. is a shepherd who leads in the path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. That in the message for the end times, he identifies a people who will follow Jesus wherever he goes. And that the life of Jesus will be manifested in their lives. And they will share a message in all the world that will increase those who are fearing God and keeping his commandments mm -hmm. and uh, having the faith of Jesus. Not just the faith in Jesus, but the faith of mm -hmm. Jesus. So, beloved, yeah. in order for that to occur, we need to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. And we also need to know error. Mm -hmm. And then we need to decide. Yes, so that our testimony can stand the test of time. Amen. Amen. So, in closing... Um, I'd like to end with Titus 2, verses 11 through 15. Um, Titus 2, verses 11 through 15. Beloved, would you like to bless us with that word? In Titus 2, verses 11 through 15. Titus 2, 11 through 15. And it reads, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, mm -hmm. teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So, babe, could you read verse 11 and 12 one more time? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Okay. So, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. I want you to mark that qualifying element because there are false gospels that don't bring about salvation. Amen? So, the grace of God that bringeth salvation. It's important for us to hear this grace. Talk to me, Donna. What does it say? Yes, it has appeared to all men. Okay. It's not hidden from any one of us. Teaching us that denying godliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So, darling, did you just tell me that the gospel of grace teaches? Like, there's a, there's a lesson to be learned from the gospel? Yes. So, we were talking about the gospel the Lamb of God slain for the for the sins of this world. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that there is a message here. Mm -hmm. And this and we're reading this message right now. So the gospel of grace that bringeth salvation and the first word of verse twelve is teaching. Can you read what it teaches, darling? Teaching what? Teaching what? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we may live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Did you just say godly in this present world? Yes. So there are a lot of Christians who say, man, we can, we're just going to live sinning. Righteously when Jesus comes. Is that what the God, is that what the Bible says? Mm -hmm. It says teaching us that denying yeah. ungodliness mm -hmm. and worldly lust, we should live soberly. Mm -hmm. Righteously and godly yeah. in which world? 
in this world, not saying we're going to wait for a later time when we know it's time for the Lord to come, not taking advantage of the time we've been given, mm -hmm. the time we've been allotted in our generation. You don't know what the future holds. You need to rely on Christ yes. and follow his guidelines. You can provide, it will provide you with health and longevity, mm -hmm. and you'll then be able to even with the short amount of time we have here to provide the wisdom or insight God has given you to someone else. Mm. So what you're saying is we're blessed to be a blessing. Yeah. And that by connecting with God, uh, we are connecting with the source of life. Mm -hmm. And we can then be conduits to connect others with God. So what it says here um, in verse 13, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Christians believe that Jesus is coming again. Amen? Yes, Christians believe that Jesus has truth to be applied, truth that guides us with things to reject, and it's not a lack of love. Jesus did not, uh, what's the word? Um, Jesus loved mm -hmm. righteousness hated iniquity, mm -hmm. that it needs to begin to be acceptable again for Christians to hate iniquity, mm -hmm. to love righteousness, because mm -hmm. that's our Savior. That is the head of Christianity who leads in his direction. He is the way, he's the truth, he's the life, he is the blueprint, amen? So there is a lot of false Christ in these last days, but by knowing the Christ of Scripture, we will be protected from the deception. So it says here, um, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who gave himself for us. Wait, wait, wait. For mm -hmm. God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever mm -hmm. believed in him should not perish. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing the same language. Who gave himself yes. for? What did he give himself for? Talk to me. What yes. does verse 14 say? He gave himself for us so that we might have life. Mm -hmm. He is the water of life, the true living word, so that... When we drink that water, when we read his word, we can have life. We can walk according to that, those principles that will protect us. Yes. Yes. So we have John 3 that speaks to the principle of eternal life, mm -hmm. that we do not perish because of our sins. But here in Titus 2, it says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us mm -hmm. from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, mm -hmm. zealous of good works. Mm -hmm. And it says, These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Mm -hmm. See, beloved, do not, <laughs> do not be ashamed of the gospel truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do not be ashamed of of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus leads in the path of righteousness. I don't care what anyone else says who claims to be a Christian. I don't care if someone comes down from heaven right now and says, um, you know, go and sin some more. You can reject it because that is a false Christ. We as Christians need to, to, to use, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. The power of Jesus was that when he was on earth, he spoke with authority because he believed what he was reading. He believed what he was saying, and that made him such a powerful witness mm -hmm. that people were astonished as his doctrine because he didn't speak as the scribes. Mm -hmm. God needs men and women who will speak with authority on this truth. Yes, we can know that this power is available to us. Mm -hmm. We can be witnesses for the Lord. Amen, amen. So, beloved, God bless you. We hope that you are blessed by this message. And please do follow up with Revelation 14, this final message that Jesus shed, said that would be shared in all the world and then the end would come. And we see Jesus on that cloud with the sickle, the harvesting of the world, the end of the world. So please do continue to study that message. This whole Bible study was inspired from that second angel that Babylon is fallen is fallen, that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The concept that there is a counterfeit spiritual system in the last days. 
that will impact people's perception, people's understanding of right from wrong. Because you know when you drink wine, you drink alcohol, it makes you drunk. You're not sober. If you're driving, you'll get into a car accident. If you're walking, you can't stand straight. You can't discern uh, certain decisions that you would avoid. You don't do now. Certain things you wouldn't say, you'll say now because the influence of the alcohol. So beloved, the alcohol, the wine is false doctrine and it impacts how we live. The Bible says, says evil communications corrupt good manners. So we have to be careful and make sure that we are going based on the truth so that we won't be deceived. The perfect example, because even though he called sin by his right name, he loved the sinner. Even though he told the woman, go and sin no more, he he was willing to, to die for her. He was willing to encourage her and guide her and empower her how to overcome. So beloved, we have to remember that Jesus, the overcomer, is the example of Christians. And he leads in the paths of righteousness, not unrighteousness. So don't be ashamed when you address unrighteousness because this is a part of of the final message to go in all the world. People need to not only know what's right, they also need to know what's wrong, but in the context of love. Because mm -hmm. Jesus, when he said, they don't condemn thee, Jesus was going to take that condemnation on the cross mm -hmm. so that she could actually get up and live. So when he said, um, I don't condemn you, he wasn't saying continue to walk in sin. He said, go and sin no more. Because guess what? I'm going to take those stones on the cross. I'm going to take that condemnation so that you can go and sin no more. Yes, and we only need to accept this most miraculous story of love so that God's power can be our own, that he may fulfill our life with his strength and that he'll lead and guide us each day. Amen, darling. That is that's the that is it. We can't do it in our own strength. Um, it is being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I think it's, um, help me Lord, um, Philippians 2.13, uh, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. John 15.5, I am the vine, ye are the branches, without me um, ye can, no, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me beareth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. nothing. This is through the power of God, yeah. and, and that is why Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel. for it is the power of God Amen. unto salvation. Amen. 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 So um, you you gave opening prayer. I think <laughs> I'll give closing prayer. Um, Father, we thank you so much for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you that Jesus was unashamed to call sin by its right name. We are thankful that Jesus came down here and he exemplified this gospel, that he loved people at every walk of life, in their high moments, in their low moments, but he never compromised. He displayed what kindness is, what love is, what compassion is, what speaking the truth in love is. And I know that there is a concerted effort to make Christians be silent to sin, to make Christians accept sin or to make Jesus some model that that almost is applauding Christians when they are silent against sin and compromise and worldliness um, around them. No, 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 no. Jesus was killed because he condemned sin. Jesus was killed because his life was one that loved sinners and yet dealt with the sin. And he encouraged people to go and sin no more. And he lived a life that condemned sin. So Lord, we just pray that you would empower Christians to recognize that the second angel is to declare that Babylon is fallen. This is not a message of saying the world is fallen because the world is already fallen. It's addressing Christianity that is counterfeit, that has a false Christ and is presenting a false doctrine that's, how do I say this, camouflaged as Christian. And Lord, your people need to know the truth. 
The people who are seeking to follow you need to know the truth and the path that you are leading in so that they can follow you. So, Father, we pray that these words, your words, as we shared um, tonight, will be a blessing to your people. We thank you for the truth, because as your son said, it is the truth that sets us free. Please forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And the words that your son shared to the woman caught in the act of adultery, who he's, whose life he spared, knowing that he would die for her because of her sin, because of that very sin. The words that he said, go and sin no more. Father, please empower us to walk like that woman caught in the act of adultery, to get up after her intimate moment with Jesus and to walk forward, seeking to walk away from sin in her life. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, beloved. Hope you all have a blessed night. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus is the way, the truth, truth and, and the, the life. life. Amen. Amen. God bless.